where was the Iraqi government? You know, we did many things wrong. We set up this facility, it became a radicalization center. But as I just told you, the Iraqi prisons were sites of endemic rape, torture, and other human rights abuses if Iraqi citizens were that lucky. They oftentimes, we, they were just being shot on the streets by the Iraqi security services and the militias. Am I right? No, I don't agree on that, Ali. I'm sorry. I, don't, I, don't, I, I certainly do not agree on that. Now, the people in the Iraqi prisons, at least they are, they can, they, their relatives can see them. That there are, I, I'm not saying that uh, Iraqi prisons were the ideal prisons. Okay, there were, there were some uh, inhumane things committed in, in these prisons. True, because we are uh, in, in a state of war, continuous state of war. But I, I think that uh, Bukha, uh, Camp Bukha, is a real disaster. And the American suffer of this, I call it chronic recurrent short-termism. They're short-sighted. They can't see behind their nose. The, the, it's, it's, I can see it happening. I can see people are coming out of this uh, uh, detention center, brainwashed. But did you say themselves. this to the Americans? Uh, of course. Did you tell of, them? Of course, was... because those, those who leave the, the, during the, the, I mean, the Americans were there. When they, the, 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 the detained, when they leave that uh, camp, they go and blame themselves again and they go and commit uh, uh, another suicide bomb. So the, we can see, and we, we put a percentage of those, the number of people. If, if we release 100 from the Camp Buka, there's going to be at least 15% of these are going to come back and fight us. So the better and despite all these facts and all these statistics, the American kept on releasing people from there, and not doing anything inside that camp. As long as it's preventive measures, let them uh, let dump them there. And what happened after that is nothing, uh, none of our business. Martin. I think just briefly on that, I think the, the statistics are that 18 of the 27 senior ISIS leaders were all veterans of Camp Booker. And I think that speaks for itself. I, I would just say in response to Dr. Rabai, we knew what was happening, you knew what was happening. We really did. The issue, though, is Iraq is the Iraqi people's country and the Iraqi government's country. We were a foreign force and a foreign power that really was intent on doing some good, even though it didn't result in, in a lot of good. But our intent was, was, I think, relatively pure. I think we can all agree on that. The issue is, if you saw these problems among the American system, and I wholeheartedly agree with you about the issue of short-termism, why did the Iraqi government not try to set up better alternative facilities? To this day, to this day, because, Dr. Obayi. Because, because, let me answer. To this Be, day, because, if I could just, if because, I could. No, because we, did, we were under occupation. The occupation, the occupying force is in charge of security, in charge of economy, in charge of politics. Officially, as of the 15th of May 2003, we were totally... We, we had we a sovereignty back to you on June 28th, 2004, Ambassador Bremer to Ayad al -Lawi. No, no. You that, were national security advisor. This is true. This is a sovereignty. But from then onward until the end of 2011, the Americans were there with 120, 30, 40, thousand uh, soldiers at the request well, of the we Iraqi go, government we, Trump, we, 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 they're there they're everywhere did you want us to leave the, earlier well, we, were, we were in the country at I, your government's I was, request Ali, I was of the opinion and I have put this in writing to the Prime Minister to Abd Aziz Hakim then and to Sistani copy I thought and I said the Americans have changed their mind they're not working with the majority Iraqis. They are working. They are. They are now consolidating the the, the western provinces. Uh, their presence there, and I think they should have left by the end of 2007. We would have been in a much better position then. I can tell you honestly that. And this is in writing. This is not a claiming. 
uh, in handwriting, uh, if I may say so. So why were you part of the SOFA negotiating team, which I was also a part of it? Uh, well, I, I, was, the I, I was representing my country. And I was representing my prime minister. Right. So, uh, so you and, and I, I was of the opinion that the, this, the Americans should have then, according to the SOFA, and I told the prime minister then, and this is the first time I mentioned it, I told the prime minister then that I can get the American out within one year. The SOFA can last only one year and leave them, and by, by the end of 2009, they could have left as well. The funny thing is See, you... the longer the Americans stayed in the country, the more mistakes after mistakes after mistakes they committed in security, in economy, and in politics. While the insurgency regrouped under the glare of Camp Bucha, across the border in Syria, the fate of two nations was being forged away from prying eyes. There were indications that there were secret meetings between the Assad regime, former Iraqi Ba'athi officers, and then individuals, jihadis, who would one day rise to, to head ISIL. Their interest was in, in, in destabilizing the, uh, the American occupation, uh, keeping the Americans off guard across the border. At that point, the Assad regime wasn't sure of what the American intentions were vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Syria, whether Syria was next, and there were, there were lots of rumors to that effect. I went and met President Bashar Assad twice and presented him with material evidence, documents, satellite pictures, confession, all sorts of evidence that his security forces were involved in active and transporting a jihadist from Syria to Iraq. And also, there were training camps with names and locations. He was in total denial of that. I remember telling him that this will, in no time, it will backfire on Syria. President Bashar al-Assad's alliance with jihadists was all about short-term security at a time of heightened paranoia. But the jihadists too, Assad and the Ba'athists, were simply a means to an end. But whatever the motivation, the effect was very clear that the senior leaders of the Islamic State group are sitting down with uh, senior Ba'athists in particular uh, a guy who, who became essential to the, uh, to the latest incarnation of ISIS, a guy who, called Haji Bakr. I interrogated one of, the, of these ISIL guys. Now he said, all our meetings, we have a guy who hides his, his face, clean shaved, he's not the Amir, he's the deputy Amir, but no decision is made without consulting him. Nobody knew much about him. He was, he was so effective in remaining low profile that there was, uh, there, there, was, there was barely a photograph of him. There was a barely an understanding of what, what role he was playing, what he was doing, or where he was. He doesn't take part in the prayer. He doesn't practice Islam. And his, his jargon is not the jihadi jargon as the Ba'athist, Pan-Arabist, Arab nationalist jargon. Who knew a lot about how to create a, a state system and certainly how to create institutions which would serve that system. The alliance between Ba'athists and Salafists conspired in secret, while insurgents plotted in prison. A troubling perfect storm had been brewing since the US invasion of Iraq. But by 2009, the worst of the turbulence had supposedly been weathered. The Sunni insurgency was considered beaten. The newly created Islamic State of Iraq was drawing breath. The Arab world was on the cusp of an historic upheaval. ISIL is the product of genocide in Syria. The Iraqi army was really a machine for making money. You will find no safe haven. 
they already had British and American special forces in Syria training rebel groups. The amount of oil that ISIL were able to sell was up upwards of around three to four million dollars per day. If